I call this ancient legacy because this is some of the stuff that I've kind of come across that looks to me like it could be references to cosmic impact phenomena. William Whiston, um, who wrote in his book, A New Theory of the Earth, from its original to the consummation of all things, wherein the creation of the world in six days, the universal dead deluge and the general conflagration is laid down in the Holy Scriptures are there, are shown to be perfectly agreeable to reason and philosophy. How about that for the title of a book? <laughs> um, and this is the quote from it that I always found really intriguing. We know no other natural causes that can produce any great and general changes in our sublunary world, but such bodies as can approach to the earth, or in other words, but comets. And we may observe a new possible cause of fast changes in the planetary world by the access and approach of these vast, hitherto little-known bodies to any of the planets. So he said that in 1696, which I find interesting because, as you know, he was in a sense, he was a, one of the early catastrophists, as were a lot of the scientists and particularly geologists in the early days, 1600s right through the 1800s, where most of them actually were catastrophists who believed that catastrophe was an integral part of the history of this planet. And they drew their inspiration for that idea from a number of sources, some of them for obs from observations out in the field, some of them like Whiston with his probably obser observations of comets, others from scripture and sacred writings and traditions and legacies that have come down to us. But So Edmund Halley, who used Newton's laws of gravitation to compute the orbit of the comet that bears his name and was thereby able to predict its return also speculated that encounters with comets played a major role in Earth's history. Like Whiston, he assumed Noah's flood to be historically authentic and proposed a comet as being the instrument of causation. In a paper presented before the Royal Society in 1694, he describes his conception of the effects of the shock of a cometary impact on the Earth. Quote, I have proposed the casual shock of a comet or other transient body. The great agitation such a shock must ne necessarily occasion in the sea sufficient to answer for all those strange appearances of heaping vast quantities of earth and high cliffs upon beds of shells which once were the bottom of the sea and raising up mountains where none were before, mixing the elements into such a heap as the poets describe the old chaos. That some such thing has happened may be guessed, for the, the earth seems as if it were new, made out of the ruins of an old world, wherein appear such animal bodies as were before the deluge." Now. Sometimes in my travels, looking over the landscapes of this earth, I come away with that very same impression, that the earth, it seems, as it were, were made new out of the ruins of an old world. Of the, and, and I'm going to show you in part two of this examples of that, what I believe are the effects of these gigantic cosmically induced catastrophes and the imprints that they have left in the landscape and how we can learn to identify those, see them that they can range from the inconceivably spectacular, like we see in some of the Western states, particularly the Northwest, but also pretty much everywhere about us. Once you know how to recognize the even the more subtle effects of these hyperscale events, uh, particularly involve uh, the extreme movement of water over the landscapes, uh, which leads me to, you know, the, the insight or the conclusion that, you know, so many of the flood myths that have come down to us um, from all parts of the globe uh, are based upon real events and that these events are not just, in fact, I was recently, somebody was criticizing me online, it was an archaeologist as a matter of fact, saying that, well, these stories are just exaggerated versions of regional events. 
And my thought, in fact, I think I may even do a response to that to say, well, excuse me, but a half a billion, a peak discharge of a half a billion cubic feet per second is not a regional event, okay? And I'm going to show you what the passage of a half a billion cubic feet per second over the landscape looks like shortly. Fred Whipple. Fred Whipple was a Harvard professor, director of the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory, a presidential medalist, and his name is synonymous with comets. He was one of the few great innovative thinkers in 20th century planetary science, yet through it all he remained just Fred to all who knew him. Whether you were a young student or a distinguished internationally recognized scientist, this gentleman treated everyone with the same kindness and respect. The entire planetary science community has benefited immeasurably from his wide-ranging insights. We've lost a creative scientist. Uh, uh, where am I? Uh, we've lost a creative scientist and a kind mentor, but he remains a superb role model for his all, for us all. This is from the obituary by Donald Yeomans, appeared in the journal Nature. Um, I had become aware of Whipple's work, I guess, around the late 70s, and the uh, the photographic evidence that I showed of the torrid meteor shower uh, was based, uh, the, the, the evidence in that graphic I showed you, it was based upon his photographic uh, studies of the torrid meteor shower. And here is some of the, I, I missed Chandra's presentation. How many of you saw it? Good, okay, so these are some of the books I would recommend. Uh, if you want to get more deeper insight into this, um, there's Klub and Napier's work, The Cosmic Serpent. That was one of the early books I read. I remember I've got a hard copy version of it that came out that I bought probably within a year of its first publication and um, 1982, although they've done a lot of work since then. And uh, they've done one called The Cosmic Winter that's worth reading. And I think you can download the entire book online. I believe I've found it in PDF form. Um, and then Chandra's book, The Cosmic Dragons. Now what's interesting about this, both of these titles invoke images, on one hand a serpent, on the other of a dragon. This is a very uh, typical way of representing ancient cosmic phenomena like meteors, fireballs, comets, and so on. Yeah, there's The Cosmic Winter, and then um, also Evolution from Space. A theory of cosmic creationism, which leads us in some very interesting ideas, um, and the idea that perhaps life on Earth was seeded from the cosmos. And we do know that the precursors to life, to the, the biogenic precursors, are found in comets, even in asteroids. So these are just, if you want to dive deeper into this on your own, and then Stephen's work, like I recommended, his, his paper on. Uh, Tell al Hamam is, is really a good read. And go to Google Scholar, you'll find it right there. You can download it, print it out. Which brings us to the deluge or the great meltdown. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna segue from the sky to the earth. And we're gonna look at some of the catastrophic events on the earth that I think may be related to activity in the sky. 